glad you could join us today on Earth Power. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. Electronics waste is a trash we generate from surplus, broken, and obsolete electronic devices. We are creating e-waste at a rapid rate, so with very short useful life, these electronics transition into e-waste at a very rapid pace. In fact, it was estimated that there were 422 million unused and unwanted cell phones accumulating in people's homes at the end of 2015. According to the tech research company Gartner, in 2015 alone, an estimated 1.9 billion cell phones were sold worldwide. That's nearly one for every four people alive. Every year, millions of electronic devices such as mobile phones, televisions, computers, laptops, and tablets reach the end of their useful life. The question is, what happened to these devices at this point? I focus today on Earth Power. Do stay with us. A rich source of gold is around the house. It comes in the form of end-of-life electronic devices that are being generated in escalating numbers every year. Some of the most commonly replaced electronics include cell phones, which is replaced about every 22 months, desktop computers, portable music players, DVD players, printer and televisions. Unfortunately, the majority of these electronic products end up in landfills and just a tiny percentage comes back as or in new electronic devices. According to a United Nations study in 2014 alone, 41.8 million tons of electronic waste, also known as e-waste, was discarded worldwide, with only 10 to 40 percent of disposal done properly. In a realistic way, okay, consider the population of Nigeria, consider the number of electronics and gadgets that are about. Consider the number of people who carry three, four mobile phones and just consider the turnaround period from um, some of these um, implements. One year, two years, three years, you have new brands, new um, uh, types coming up and people keep changing. What happens with what is abandoned? In the last decade, Nigeria has seen growth in the information and communications technology area. Almost all businesses, big or small, use electronic devices, and more Nigerians have personal computers and cell phones than ever before. Due to rapid technology changes, low initial costs, and decreased lifespan of electronic products, the result of this is that the turnover time of electronic equipment has increased dramatically and electronic equipment is replaced within a short period of time. In office environments, computers, fax machines and printers often have very short lifespans. It is estimated that thousands of tons of e-waste is generated yearly by the corporate world in Nigeria. Large amounts of e-waste are either stored away or are dumped on sites across cities. Not only is the space that they take up a problem, but electronic goods often contain hazardous substances such as lead, mercury and cadmium. And if these chemicals enter the water table, they can be ingested. Unfortunately, recycling of these products is still in an inefficient manner. For example, such methods like open burning of plastics or copper wires to reduce waste volume and to salvage valuable metals like copper and strong acid leaching of printed wiring to recover precious metals as they come on. It's all electronic devices in Nigeria. Uh, what happens at the end? What's the final stage for these electronics? Our mobile phones, our washing machines, our fridges. Some of these uh, ele electronics, they contain very hazardous material. You know, when we're talking about IT equipment, you have the lithium ion batteries, you have mercury in the screens. You know, uh, when we talk about batteries like lead acid batteries, the way that uh, they're managing these in Nigeria right now. They're being processed, but informally. And what I mean by that is that the way that people are managing the electronic waste is doing harm to themselves and harm to the environment. So Nigerians are dying because of this poor management of electronics. And mind you, e-waste is one of the most hazardous waste streams on the planet. So of all the waste that we should be managing correctly, definitely 
e-waste is one of them. Adrian heads Hinkley in Nigeria. In 2012, the company says it processed about 2 million items. Its recycling services department is one of several companies in Nigeria that recover repairable items from waste items for refurbishment and reuse. So we, in 2011, took a decision that we have to try and do something to prevent this electronics getting into the wrong hands and being managed informally and put a more formal recycling process into place. And that was how Hinkley Recycling started. Although we didn't start operations until last year, we've been working closely with the Nigerian government, the federal government, uh, working with Nezrea, working with La Sepa, um, and also the OEM, companies that want to take responsible action for their electronics. We're working with these organizations to make sure that we can put the best international practice here in Nigeria for recycling of electronics. And so far, so good. It's, it's going well. Experts have identified the absence of electronic waste laws and regulatory framework in West Africa. Pre disposes countries within the region to indiscriminate dumping of e-waste from the industrialized countries of the world. For instance, most of the imported second-hand computers are almost at the end of their life cycle, and burnt copper wires derived from such computers can cause cancer. The difference between us and the informal sector is that we extract the hazardous material, ensure that those hazardous materials go for further treatment under environmentally friendly practice, so that they don't end up in dump sites, don't end up in the illegal dumping sites. And uh, you know, it's very common in Nigeria to extract copper from cable, that they will take bundles of cable and burn them in open fire. In the process of doing that, they're breathing in a lot of toxins. Uh, those toxins are carcinogenic and can end up causing cancer. It's just for lack of data and statistics, but we know that these things will be causing lung cancer for some of these boys who are burning these cables and trying to extract that value from the material. We're not saying let's not extract the, the value. We should. Let's get the copper out of the cables, but let's make sure that they're not done in an, an illegal, informal manner, which ends up killing people. On his part, the Director General